hopefully not I'll put this right in front of Please me. Please don't. <laughs> in the flash room, we had an incident. Uh, okay. You know, people have been saying that in the second season, uh, Legends of Tomorrow found its voice. Yeah. What I want to know from you is, what is that voice in your mind, and how is that continuing with the season three? Yeah. Um, it's funny, because it's doing two things at the same time, which seem like they would be in, in sort of in conflict. Because at once, it's sort of just giving in to the absurdity, like, like our, our characters are so sarcastic and sort of blithe, and they sort of don't take their jobs as being heroes all that seriously. You know, it's a bit of a rump. And, um, but, it, but, but it's also infused with, like, some, some genuine uh, heart that, you know, I think that... The, their fondness for each other, the sort of complexity of their relationships. Like, you know, it's become more sincere, like interpersonally, and at the same time, as far as it comes to their jobs, I think they've they've sort of settled in a little bit. I mean, season one was saving the world from an immortal madman. It didn't give them a lot of chance to sort of sit back in the pocket and to enjoy um, time travel and that's a shame because yes there's a job to be done and oftentimes the stakes are high but you might as well enjoy the ride like it's you know and, and I like I like that they sort of stop to smell the roses now and they've just embraced that this is who they are they're no longer fighting the premise of the show it's they're no longer hurry up and let's go home to our lives I mean season three begins with our guys threatened with the dissolution of their team and that's a serious threat because they all have to wonder like this is who we've become like I don't know if I have a life to go back to I don't know who I was before this existed and for people like Mick Rory to admit that you need these people that you claim to not even like you know it's, 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 if there's something really bittersweet about um, the things that go unsaid on our show you know, the idea that Mick Rory, that this is his sort of surrogate family. Yeah, I mean, there's some real real sweetness. And like I said, at the same time, there's also, we've given ourselves license to just have fun and have episodes about George Lucas or about, um, you know, in this season, we've, we have an episode about Helen of Troy showing up in 1938 Hollywood. And, you know, yes, two studios going to war a la the Trojan War. Like, it's not like, life and death, but like on our show, we can make that, um, we can make that feel important. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's incredible what we can get away with. How broken is the time stream? Now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's, it's broken. Um, I mean, the, the thing that, you know, the, the idea of these anachronisms, I mean, we, we imagine that history is like a puzzle that got like shaken up and little bits of it went and they fell in the wrong spot. And so it, it, it sort of it intensifies the notion of last year where you had these little tears to history that had to be repaired. You know, now you have Julius Caesar showing up at a beach in Aruba. And so there's like two sides to the equation. There's like, we have to get Julius Caesar. Then we have to get him back to 49 BC. Then we have to like reinsert him into his original timeline. And so it's like, it's spinning plates. Um, and the additional complication is that there's like a legitimate branch of time enforcement who are like, guys, we've got this. Like, really, like, retire. Go sit on a beach in Aruba that doesn't have Julius Caesar on it. Like, like, I mean, it's it's our guys sort of fighting for their existence. I mean, last year they were the only game in town, and they were the only people who could do their job. But now Rip has replaced them with an institution, and you know we're the Beverly Hills cop to their LAPD, which, you know, is, is where the legends belong. You know, they, they belong as the scrappy bad news bears who can never quite live up to the, the, the you know, the polished shine version of, of what they're supposed to be doing. But, um, but in the end, it's sort of their secret weapon is their, like, sentimentality and their love for each other. And all the, all the things that get them in trouble, like, eventually are also the same things that allow them to, like, prevail. And they, you know, they do the right thing. It just it takes them 42 minutes of TV to get there. You know? can, can you talk about the introduction of, is it Zari? Zari, yeah. 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 Um, well, we're going to meet her in episode three. Um, 
you know, um, you know, we wanted to make her entrance different than um, than Nate's was. Uh, you know, he sort of took to being a superhero, like a, a pig to mud, um, and so. We wanted someone who had a, a bit of a more uncomfortable relationship with the notion of, of joining a team. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what, she sees our guys as um, as frauds, essentially, because when we announce, like, hey, we're time travelers, we save history, we've saved the world, like, her world is awful, and so she, she challenges us to do more than just reestablish the status quo. It's like, why not make it better? There's lots of places in history that are screwed up to begin with, and um, and it's you know, it's 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 fun to have somebody push our guys out of their comfort zone. So like, um, you know, uh, I, I think Zari will, will challenge them in a way that will you know force them to to, to like reevaluate what they're doing uh, as a team. Somebody she has like an immediate connection with. Yeah, I mean, really, it's it's Ray primarily because um, you know he's a guy who's like an Elon Musk inventor, futurist, always think, saying tomorrow's going to be better because of these wonderful gadgets that I invent. And she is like, I'm from that future. It's awful. <laughs> All that like patting yourself on the back and talking about what a wonderful world you're ushering in. It didn't come to pass. So like, do something about it. Like, don't, don't invent like a better smartphone. Like, to, you know, find a way that you can like make the world better for people like me, you know? Um, and so for Ray, that's, you know, he's a rule follower by nature, but it will sort of force him to start thinking about time as something, or history as something that can be engineered, you know? Engineering isn't all about little devices. It's about like, what if you could, what if you could, tinker with time in a way that that, that make, makes history better than it was originally. What are you most excited for this season? What's that? What are you most excited for? Oh, I mean, the show is just you. You have. You get these ideas in your head, and you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I get, um, yeah, and it's just like, you get to do whatever movie you love, if you want to, or Stranger Things, like, we all love Stranger Things, episode four, we're doing our Stranger Things, uh, you know, I wanted to, you know, do a, a story about, you know, uh, the fall of Troy and, and Homer's, you know, epic, we get to do that in Hollywood, so it's like, whatever you think of, whatever movie you love, you can do it. We can do the right stuff. This is the third con, and this is the most energetic I've seen you at. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. Well, I finished my panel. <laughs>